every year I think everybody does exactly the same thing they just eat a load of rubbish at Christmas get to the other side of it and just go yeah let's just make a fresh start after Christmas and join the gym or something like that we actually joined ours about two months ago so we're not that bad arrived at this gym. I might give you a quick tour actually. This is like the restaurant area. If you come up here, this is the gym. This is absolute killer. Me and Sarah just pretty much passed out when we did one of these like hit things around there. Anyway, better go down to the pool. We've got some courts as well for racket stuff. I don't really do that, but it's pretty good. And in here you've got this little um, business centre. So you can just like chill out, have a little coffee and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So today's going to be pretty light. It's just going to be just a little swim. I'm not going to do anything hardcore. My elbow is still killing from that accident. Do this. Gonna brave the outside pool. Steaming a bit. Right guys, I've just got out of here and look at this. I don't know if you can see this. Look at that. That must be a really good sunset above there. Let's see if I can see a bit more. Whoa! Oh, this is unbelievable. Just to think this morning, this was just completely and utterly like, well, not here obviously, but at home it was just really misty, really cold. Now look at it. Absolutely unbelievable. I wish I could stay here longer and just like, you know, watch the um, watch it go completely dark. So we can have some fantastic views of the stars tonight from here. So cool. So yeah, as I was saying, guys, it's quite a chilled one, really. It's a good thing about this place. You can go as mad or as chilled out as you want. And we just came really just for like a quick swim and just chill out, really. We'll have a little spa session. Feels good to have a little swim, anyway. Just. How long were you in there for? Oh, about six limps. <laughs> about 15 minutes. Yeah, we, to be fair, we did about, I don't know, four or five limps and then just went and sat in the hot tub. <laughs> and now we're, now we're really hungry, so we're just getting something to eat. This is what we're going to do here. Five minutes in there, two hours in here. Yeah, I'm getting the falafel burger. The only thing I don't like about it is the changes. Sweet potato fries. I hate that. It's got to be done, guys. Am I the only person that gets really hungry after swimming? We get hungry, didn't we? It's a quick little nest camera update, because I know a few of you are asking about watching pets and stuff on there. Um, there you go. See it live in real time. Swim was good. Food was good. It's dark now. It's going to be another chilly one.
Whoa. All right, back from the gym, feeling refreshed. And um, I'm sitting down here because I wanted to show you a few things that I'd got hold of in, well, this year, 2016, um, but didn't actually sort of feature it in the vlog or didn't make a video about it. I meant to do it, but it just sort of hasn't really happened. So let's dive straight in. The first thing I've got here is the, um, the Fat Shark goggles. Now, these are basically video goggles for the, um, for the drone. So what these do is you just basically stick them on your head. You've got two screens inside here and um, you've got like a HDMI connector on the bottom and that just plugs into the bottom of our Phantom remote. This is, I'll come on to this in a minute, this is, this is an upgraded Phantom um, remote. So yeah, this allows you to fly the drone um, in a thing called FPV, which is like first person view, um, which is unbelievable. Now these are pretty high-end um, goggles. Um, this thing here is the battery, which basically just plugs into the, into the side of it. Um, and the view that you get from these is just absolutely stunning. It's like flying an actual aircraft from first person view. Now it's got a massive buzz around it, um, FPV. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd kind of dive in and see what it was all about. Um, you can also use these on other drones as well, ones that have got kind of um, built in cameras. So like some of the smaller, cheaper drones you can do and you can kind of whiz through the trees and all that sort of stuff. This just makes it so much easier to see where you're going, what you're looking at, and all this stuff. The only strange thing is, when you've got them on, you're kind of walking around going, where am I, you know? <laughs> yeah, you kind of lose your orientation a little bit, because you're looking at here and you're so immersed in the actual experience of, of the drone um, and what it's seeing, that you kind of lose concept of what's going on around you. So, um, excuse that noise underneath, that's just my... My little cat, she's just clawing this. This is actually a scratching post. It makes a very, very good um, camera stand. <laughs> so these are great. They're called Fat Shark Dominator V3 um, goggles, I think. So yeah, these are fantastic. If you're into kind of flying and you're taking it seriously and you wanna, you know, get more of an experience of actually flying the craft rather than, you know, just taking video shots and stuff. I mean, these are fantastic for taking video as well because you can actually get a lot closer to your subject and see what's, um, what's going on. Fantastic bit of kit, and I'm using these quite a lot at the moment. Um, some of those beach shots that I've been doing in the uh, in the vlogs, basically using these to make it a lot easier to see, you know, where you're going and stuff like that. So next up, I'm gonna move on to this. This is the Phantom controller. Um, Phantom, this is actually a Phantom 3 controller, even though I've got a Phantom 4 drone. Um, and this looks completely different to, um, well, a little bit different to the, to the sort of controller that you're used to. Normally they have kind of two antennas coming out at the top. This has actually got one great big antenna on the front of the controller and that's made possible by a modification that you can do to these controllers which allow you to add two um, connections. One's for the video and one's for the actual controller and um, these two little kind of patch leads go into this this antenna. So it's two antennas in this and that means you know it increases the range by I don't know, it's a stupid amount. It, it literally will just keep on going. You've seen some of my videos where I'm doing the um, long distance drone flying. This is what I'm using for that. Right, so yeah, also I've got the um, optional connector board um, which you can add to the Phantom 3 and Phantom 4 controllers. And that gives you a HDMI um, plug. It also gives you your micro USB um, connector, which I'm not sure what that's for. I think that might be for firmware and stuff like that. Um, and then you've obviously got your normal USB connector for connecting up the smartphone as well. Um, now obviously I needed this because the Fat Shark goggles have got a HDMI input and you can't actually use them without, um, without that. So it's nice that it's, it's got a proper digital um, output on there and it just works fantastically. But this, this is called an IT Elite DVS extender. I'll try and leave the link in the um, description. I think the UK place that I got this from is actually disappeared now I tried to go on their website the other day and it wasn't working so I'll have to see if I can find that if it's still working I'll put the link on obviously in the in the description um, and those guys will also do um, this modification just turn it around they will also do this modification for you so if you're not confident in soldering they'll actually do that for you and I, I mean I can't recommend this enough this is transformed the drone I mean you shouldn't expect to get huge huge range um, increases in built-up areas because it's not going to happen. This is this is like Wi-Fi frequency, so you know you're going to be fighting with Wi-Fi routers where, whatever you do. But out in the fields, absolutely fantastic. So next thing, um, this little thing is an absolute gem. 
this is a GoPro um, session. This isn't the newest one. This is actually kind of the model before. Um, and this has just been fantastic. It's just so small. You can mount it anywhere. You can put it on the, I've put it on the quad bike. I've put it on the, on the bike, on the helmet. It fits in a little um, kind of mount there. And um, yeah, they're just fantastic. It's really, really simple. You just push the button on the top of it and um, it just starts recording. It's got a micro SD card in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a micro SD card in the bottom. And um, obviously this is cool because it's got Wi-Fi as well. So you can actually set up your phone and view what the camera's actually viewing. Um, and these have got a big, big wide field of view as well. So you can see so much when you're, well, you've seen, you must've seen the, the um, bike videos and stuff that I've done. Um, the only thing I will say about this is I'm generally happy with it, but the software is a little bit quirky. Like sometimes when you push the buttons, it takes a little while to come on. And then, you know, when it does come on, it, it kind of like, you know, it's a little bit slow. You can't really see clearly from this sort of tiny little screen um, on the back there. But, you know, generally it works. They work quite well. I have had issues where it's not recorded anything. Um, it's just, just been an absolute pain. But now when I've got it mounted on the, um, on the helmet, I kind of look at the reflection in my, um, I think it's just the display on the, on the bike. I can see the little red flashing light. Um, that's recording so you probably see it come on now um, just, there you go see so when it's recording it just flashes away and um, just like that pretty pretty neat but this is this is fantastic this has made me kind of well, this is my first GoPro but it's made me think right I just want to go full on and get the sort of new hero um, the GoPro hero because it just looks better it's got a screen on the back so you can clearly monitor what you're um, you know what you what you're looking at so that's good so next up, I want to show you this. This is actually something that I sell through my company, um, and it is a Android box. For those of you who don't really know, it allows you to run Android operating system on your TV. So you connect your TV to the HDMI connector there. Um, it connects up by Wi-Fi to your um, to your your home router, and it allows you to basically just run Android apps on your TV. So this is fantastic for like things like Netflix, for things like iPlayer for all the other things that you can't do with just your normal TV. Most TVs have got, um, you know, iPlayer, Netflix, stuff like that built into them now. But this is actually fantastic because you can then add, extend those apps really easily. And because it's Android, there's so many more apps than you'll ever find on your TV's, your your smart TV's store, um, app store. You know, so it, it, it's a it's a great bit of kit for that. Very very small, very very light. Um, and we sell those on, on cloudstow.com. Um, it comes with a remote control as well. It's just a really neat bit of kit. Um, and of course you can store your own films on there as well um, and connect hard drives because it's, um, it's got a USB connector on the side. Um, and it's also got memory. It's basically like a mobile phone, but in a box with no screen and you can just connect it to your TV. So well worth getting hold of one of them. Next up, um, I've got this. This is a Garmin Etrex Touch 35. Now, I've always been a real big fan of standalone GPSs because on your phone, it's great. But A, it just kills the battery. And B, you, in my opinion, you just can never really beat um, you know, a hardware piece of kit that does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, I think I may have shown this briefly, maybe in a couple of clips whilst I was on a, on a plane um, trip a little while ago but basically yeah it's a GPS unit I had one of these ages and ages ago like a, an e-trex that was you know it was, we put, we're probably talking like 10 15 years ago now and the screen was black and white so when I saw this um, that come out and it wasn't you know that expensive and it's got a color screen touch screen you know you can navigate around on it and the operating system is really really cool and it runs off of two AA batteries so you know in emergencies and things like that you ever need one of these you don't have to worry about finding the charger you can just get an AA battery two AA batteries and just stick them in and it works um, the great thing about this as well is the fact that it's actually got um, a thing called Ant Plus which is allows you to add sensors onto it um, I don't know if it's going to pick it up now probably not because I'm a little way away from the sensor but basically I've got like a temperature sensor outside just sitting outside on the window ledge um, and it will just log over 24 hours what the temperature does and also your um, sort of ambient pressure and um, barometric pressure and stuff like that. So it's really, really cool. You know, doubles as like a weather station as well in some respects. Um, it's got memory. You can add memory to it. Um, it's got a micro SD card slot in there as well. Um, but I found 
out on the bike this is just fantastic because if you've got your phone, it, your phone's nice and slim and it's a really sexy bit of kit and you don't want to be dropping that whilst you're doing some kind of extreme sport. So, you know, having this mounted on the bike um, allows you to just have a map that's permanently, permanently on and then you can just, you know, ride around and follow tracks based on the map. It interfaces with software on the computer as well, so you can just, you know, navigate based on a track that you've created um, at home. So, yeah, really, really good bit of kit. Thoroughly recommend that. Um, there's some really, really kind of top end expensive ones that you can get from Garmin, but you know, don't really need it. Your phone will do a lot of that stuff, but if you just want a straightforward GPS unit that you can just stick in your pocket, super small, recommend getting one of those. Probably noticed this penny board. Sarah's got me one of these for Christmas. Um, haven't really tested it out that much, but um, let's just say um, she bought it before I had the skateboard accident, which um, everything's starting to heal now, so I've been just running around the house on this. I haven't been outside yet on it. Lastly, because this is super quick, I'm sorry guys if I'm rushing through this really, really fast. Lastly, um, a couple of people mentioned, oh, your computers are really, really cool. Um, <laughs> my cat's just just jumping behind the camera right now. So apologies if it's if it's going up and down. Yeah, I think it might have been Gary that um, said about the computers, saying, oh, quite like the look of your computers. So yeah, this, this guy's is a MacBook. It's not a MacBook Pro. Um, now, you might be wondering, why has he gone for kind of like a, a MacBook rather than a, rather than a Pro? Well, this is a funny one because actually Apple have brought out new MacBooks, but um, unfortunately, there's a host, a host of reasons, which I won't go into now, that I decided I wasn't gonna bother. Um, and I was gonna actually keep my existing model MacBook, which is super fast. It's only about two years old. Um, super fast, super quick, got a great display, good battery life, and it's got all the ports that you need. Now, this little one is actually a great little portable computer. Um, now, for those of you who know um, the sort of stuff I do um, as a day job, um, we were into kind of very, very small computers, very, very fast, small embedded machines that can basically do what a full-size computer can do, but actually very, 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 very small. And that's made possible by mobile type CPUs. Um, and that's exactly what this has got in it. It's got an Intel Core M processor, which is tiny. Now this has got no fans in it. This has got no kind of like active cooling or anything like that. It's all completely fanless, um, which is just absolutely amazing. And that means it can be very, very thin. I mean, this has got, a, this has actually got a, got a um, like a tough shell case on it because I'm practically using this like an iPad now. Now I've used iPads before for, for a host of reasons. I don't actually have an up-to-date iPad at the moment. Reason is, is because I prefer to have a computer where you can actually kind of use tactile keys, you can do all the things that you need to do on it um, without having to download an app or, you know, it, it's, it's fine for the phone. In actual fact, my iPhone 7, um, my iPhone 7 Plus is nearly as big as an iPad mini, so that's what I'm using day to day for kind of, you know, quick stuff. It always comes everywhere with me as you've seen um, but this this is something this is something pretty interesting um, you know it's not the fastest computer in the world it's nowhere near as fast as a MacBook Pro if you're doing you know 4k video editing but the last three videos I've done I've actually edited on this and one of them was 4k and it handled it absolutely fine so it does say a lot for the kind of future of, of computing I think to have something this small and this neat you know, versus having something that's pretty big and clunky. I used to take around the MacBook Pro 15 inch, like everywhere, and I used to put it in my backpack, put it in the drone pack, and it's it's just, it's a beast. I mean, it's a beast power-wise as well, don't get me wrong, it's, it's absolutely the fastest computer I've actually had, um, but, you know, it's just not always practical to sort of carry around a big computer like this, and, you know, we're, we're intending on doing a bit more traveling, so this guy's, um, if you're in the market for, for a computer, I'd say for kind of like general things like web browsing, doing your email, I run my business from this, it's perfect for that. Photoshop, I've got on here, um, and Final Cut, obviously, for doing video editing. This thing, it really is a lot better than, than you'd think for a kind of like one of the lower tier um, MacBooks in the range. Um, I mean, obviously the price is, is not lower tier, but for a computer that's got a Core M processor in it, I'm so impressed with this. I mean, both me and Sarah have these now, and um, we're just really, really impressed with them. They just do everything with these. And actually, she came from a, um, a MacBook Air, 
that was her last computer like the 11 inch one um, and that's got an i3 uh, a core i3 uh, intel processor in it and they're, they're not that slow they're pretty pretty fast um, but she's not noticing any difference when she's doing her videos in in iMovie um, i'm noticing export times in final cut are longer because you know it's not as powerful it hasn't got as much ram xyz but you know I can just use the MacBook Pro for that, or the iMac I've got for, um, for these for these sort of tasks. But to have something portable, I still like to have a computer. I don't. I mean, I don't know if I'm just old school. I still like to have a keyboard. I still like to have a trackpad. I still like to be able to do things on the computer that you just you just can't do on an iPad. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I hope that was interesting. Um, I just wanted to show you, as I say, just you know some of the stuff that I'd got in 2016 that I didn't actually put in the vlog, or maybe I just showed a little snippet of it. Um, and you might have thought, oh, what was that? But um, yeah, anyway, so hopefully that was interesting. Um, you know, 2016's obviously out, 2017's just around the corner. Hopefully we will have a lot more new things in 2017 to show you. Anyway, I'm gonna probably sign out the vlog now because um, I don't think there's much else happening. But you know, if there is, I'll probably put it in. But if, if not, I'll catch you later. Here she is, look, she's the one that was making the camera move. Anyway guys, catch you later, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you're not ready and give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Bye.